people. This is Kareem Piranha coming at you once again. Just had a good conversation with one of my homeboys um, who's currently a police officer. And uh, we were talking about mental health and law enforcement. And one of the things I can say about it being that I was a former police officer for eight years. And then I got out of the game because you know, I ran into some challenges with uh, use of force, complaints, and um, ended up just leaving the profession altogether because of the burnout I was experiencing. Didn't know it was burnout at the time. Um, but discovered it later on when I went back to school to get my degree in counseling. And one of the things that I've discovered or, or put together, being a clinician with that type of experience, former law enforcement experience, and understanding how the uh, complexity of using force in a community that doesn't totally understand how officers are trained to do their job, it, it creates a, a plethora of unanswered questions for both sides, law enforcement and the community. And I can tell you this, and I talk about this in my book, I'm breaking the code of silence, the cop's journey to triumph and truth. I talk about how police officers are trained in the VLET program, and it's a lot of um, shooter don't shoot scenarios and, and adrenaline jacked type activities to condition the officer's mind to respond to a threat according to the scenarios that are created. A man concealing hands, a man pulls out a gun but's not pointing it at the officer, a man's hand up with a gun in his hand. Um, you know, different scenarios, what will the officer do? And then conditioning takes place in the fight or, or, or flight scenario. Now, neuroscience tells us that when we are in a state of shock or, or when we are confronted with a life and death situation, the brain cannot rationally think. The brain does what it knows to do in an impulsive way. So in training, what happens is the uh, BLT curriculum is designed to educate officers on how to survive a, a life and death situation, how to survive an imminent threat that's um, presented to them. And, and you, gotta, you have to understand that according to neuroscience, right, all of your senses are present. You have your sight, you have your hearing, you have your smell, you have your touch, taste, and, and, and all your senses are, are present. And if any one of those senses are triggered, right, according to the training, uh, something about what this person just did reminds me of the training. I instinct, I instinctively revert to that hyper vigilant mode, that 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 ready for combat mode that BLT trains me for. So if the person just decided to go reach for his wallet, it looks like he's reaching for a gun. According to my training, people who do this, they are going to, for a gun, and I need to address that threat immediately with double tap to the midsection. And so what happens is the training induces a mind state. I call it a fear-based mind state associated with perceived threats that may not actually be a threat. And so BLET doesn't legislate, hey, more black people are prone to this or white people or Puerto Rican or, or anything like that. It doesn't legislate. It legislates behavior, these types of behaviors. And what happens is mainstream media presents these types of behaviors and assigns them to a certain type of people, a certain culture of people, and then that completes the conditioning. So we get the BLET behaviors, and then we get the mainstream media types of people who exhibit these behaviors. You put that together in one brain, when you become hypervigilant or, or worked up by a, a, a perceived threat, you automatically instinctively go back to what the training taught you, and that's the impulsively either fight fight, freeze, or in the BLET training, address the threat. And so you have a lot of unarmed people being shot by police officers because of that particular training. A training that is void or, 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 or absent or without counseling to counteract the impulsivity, to be able to, even though I see a threat, I need to make sure I assess the threat completely to make sure that it is, in fact, not what I presume it to be. If the person is reaching or the person fails to follow instructions, there's just some gimmies. Like, you know, if you don't comply with an officer's reasonable request or while, if you don't listen to the officer's instructions and you do things just because you want to do them, yeah, you're going to put yourself in what I call the space of the unknown and that's going to condition or create an opportunity for that officer to plug your ass. So you need to comply. You need to comply. Don't 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 give so much lip service. Don't give all this yin yang talk. Just comply with the officer and things go smooth. If it's an issue or if it's a problem, yo, go to the police department, file a complaint. 
There's a protocol for that. And so, you know, hell, I had it done on me mad times. You know what I'm saying? When people didn't like the way I interacted with them when I was a police officer. And, you know, I, and I go into more of that stuff in the book. So, um, I wanted to drop this video because, you know, a lot of police officers are, are out here struggling in silence. Or they're suffering, rather, in silence with burnout, with stress uh, on the job, stress, the politics of the damn agency, the law enforcement culture that says, hey, you should be tough. And, you know, the reality is, man, you have a lot of police officers who are not really built for the job but who um, try to subscribe to the perception of the uniform. And the uniform is supposed to represent valor, toughness, courage, bravery, and all these other great things that I think everybody would love to have as an attribute. But the reality is everybody isn't built that way. And you have a lot of police officers in the uniform trying to live up to that particular standard but fall way short. And then they mess around and make mistakes that end up compromising or complicating Either their either their, uh, their, their, their professional journey or the life of somebody else. So um, I don't think much credit or much effort is made to really incorporate counseling into law enforcement training or just in general in a law enforcement officer's career because you know it's a job that is high stress and if you don't maintain a level of balance, a level of um, wellness. Yo, it will run you crazy. So what you find typically, what I've what I discovered, you find, and even I'm guilty of this, yo, you'll find police officers, instead of dealing with the problem, or the psychological problems or the emotional problems, they will go to the gym and bust down, you know, three, 400 pound weights. They'll go to the uh, dojo and practice some jujitsu or practice some some, some karate or, or some um, taekwondo or something like that. Some Wim Chun, whatever, whatever they do, uh, keto. They'll practice some type of form of martial arts. Some officers, you know, uh, to try to cope with their stress, they want to go to the gun range and, and, and do all type of tactical, tactical um, exercises to um, perfect their gun battling skills. Um, but but that stuff does not remedy the stress. You have some that um, you know will drink or do drugs when they get when they get off duty. Again, just to cope with to drink a lot of alcohol, whatever maybe, just to cope with those stressors that they don't really want to confront because it's contrary to what the uh, perception or what the uh, interpretation of the uniform suggests. So I'm here to tell you this, man. If you fail to keep it 100 with yourself, you're going to fail. You're going to fail your test miserably. And um, yeah, you know, law enforcement, you know, they require you to be in physical tip top shape because you got a lot of suspects out here that, that can run a mile real quick especially when they're scared and suspects that like to fight and, and, and you know, throw hands or, or use guns and all that. And so officers have to be equally uh, ready for that type of combat. But the one villain or the one suspect that officers are not prepared for is that damn burnout. And burnout will mess you up. It'll take your life and your livelihood if you don't check it. Stress left unaddressed creates a mess. So I encourage you to get with a counselor. Um, you know, my practice, selftalkcounseling.com. You know, I'm a former police officer. I understand the, the complexities and the layers of the dang on culture. And, you know, you know, I'm relative. I understand the game. And I understand what officers deal with on a day-in, day-out basis. And at the same token, man, I am passionate about educating the community on how to play the game correctly so that they don't get shot. Find a counselor. Self-talkcounseling.com. I can help you.